Folks, thank you so much for being here. How are y'all doing? That was a good first, no, that was good. That was a good first try. How's everyone doing? There we go, there we go. I am clearly at Students for Liberty. Uh, who here, show of hands, who here is a student? I can barely see anyone anyway, but I, I do see some hands raised. Uh, so a lot of students here. I have so enjoyed so much talking with the students here. Every time I get to talk with one of you about what brought you to Liberty, what your plans are for the future, how you wanna be a leader for the Liberty movement in the future, I feel, well, I feel actually very old. Uh, because I am often speaking with a, uh, an adult who is incredibly intelligent and seems to understand and articulate things possibly better than me, who is literally half my age. But that's my own personal problem. But what I really actually feel when I talk with you is an incredible amount of excitement for the future. Because even though I feel old, I realize that this movement and our values are timeless. I recognize, as I believe you do, that we have the solutions that are going to fix things. Real quick, just throw out a couple, uh, if, in one or fewer words, what does libertarianism mean to you? What does liberty mean to you? Freedom. Freedom. Choice. Choice. Anarchy. Anarchy, there you go. There's always one. Entrepreneurialism. Consent, Consent. that's a big one. Oh. Lack of attack. Those were all great things. Everything that was said all at once there was fantastic. Listen, we know we have the solutions. We know that we are going to fix the problems that we're facing because we are the only ones who have the real answers here. Who here is ready to take the ideas that they're learning, including the ones they've learned here, and go out and win for liberty across the planet? Absolutely, I am too. And the thing is, there's only one thing standing between us and total victory for liberty across the world. Other people. It's, it's a very unfortunate part of it, is that we actually have to convince other people to go along with it. But the problem is, very often, other people don't understand our ideas, or they have a bad take on it. Many other people think that freedom is part of the problem. They might think that we're too free. They might think that we need even more regulations. Now, how do you deal with someone like that? I think we all know the answer. You tell them they're wrong online, you argue with them endlessly, and then you make memes about how stupid they are. Thank you so much, thank you, thank you. No, I'm concerned about how many of you just clapped for that. Uh, <laughs> listen, I get it. I like arguing on the internet as much as anyone else here, and that's unfortunate because I shouldn't be doing that. I should be leading by example. But you know what I like more than arguing? I like tapping into what they already agree with us on. I have found, and I think you'll agree with me by the end of this, I have found that we can boil down not just the, the ideas of liberty, but how we can win for liberty into an idea that just about every single person agrees with. And that word is respect. I'm gonna prove it right now. Thank you. I'm gonna prove it right, by the way, anytime you wanna clap, I will stop, okay? This is a. <laughs> Thank you for that completely unprompted applause. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm gonna prove it right now. Who here is against respect? There we go. The thing is, we all intuitively understand that respect is good, but I'm gonna go even deeper with this. Uh, to be here at Students for Liberty, to leave wherever you live and to come here, interacting with everyone here and then going home, you will likely interact, not just here, but everywhere that you've had to go to get here and back home, you will have to have interacted with thousands, tens of thousands, possibly even hundreds of thousands of people that you've been in close proximity to, and the vast, vast majority of all of those people that you interact with are complete and total strangers. You know nothing about them, you don't know what their values are, you don't know what their aims are, you don't know what they have planned, and yet for the most part, we have been able to do, you have been able to come here and go back home and you have a, a reasonable, relatively reasonable expectation that you are safe. The reason that we have that, oh, and it's that expectation that allows us to thrive. It is that expectation that we are relatively safe that allows us to be able to be as prosperous and harmonious and happy as we are. Well, what is that expectation? We have an expectation that people will, that just about every single one of those people will have a basic level of respect for us as individual human beings and that we in turn will have that same respect for them. Now when I say respect, I don't mean that they like you or care about you or 
agree with you or even know anything about you. You don't know anything about them. So you, you might not care about them any more than you care about any other person. But you have a basic intrinsic level of respect for them as an individual human being. It is why you don't stomp on them the same way you might step on an ant that you're walking by. It's because you recognize that they're human beings and that therefore you're not going to hurt them. You're not going to rob them. You're not going to assault them. You're not going to kill them. You're not going to do anything else to them. And in turn, you expect that from them. We talk a lot about high trust societies and how they're safer and people are happier in them. Well, high trust of what? Trust that there is a, a basic level of individual human respect that everyone or just about everyone in that community or that neighborhood or that country or society or whatever else have for one another. Now, this is something that intuitively, intrinsically makes sense to the point where we don't even really think about it. I could say this to a, a seven-year-old. Hey, if you respect other people and they respect you, then that's good, right? And they'll say, yes, of course. Everyone knows this. And yet, so many of us, no one in here, of course, we're all very, very smart, but so many of us will put that expectation aside for the government. The government is just people. The government is people like everyone else in here. Might be a couple lizards, but for the most part, for the most part, they're human beings just like you and me, thank you. Uh, very, uh, for the most part, they are human beings who are, they are all human beings, let's be clear. I'm not, I want to be clear. Uh, I, I have no evidence that any of them are lizards. And so these are human beings who, if they were not acting in that capacity as a government official, a politician, a law enforcer, a bureaucrat, whatever, whatever their position is in the government, if they were acting outside of that capacity, we would expect them to respect us. If that same person were walking down the road and they walked up to you and said, give me 25% of everything you have on you or I'm gonna make your life really difficult, you're gonna fight back, you're gonna ask for help, you're gonna run away. Or if you do give to them, it's gonna be completely under duress and you're gonna report them to someone. But if that same person gets up behind a really nice podium like this and says, folks, I have some fantastic news. You've seen this before. I have some fantastic news. I am going to provide you with the things that you need, and I'm only going to have to increase taxes by 25%. We are levying a new 25%, and of course, the unspoken there is you're going to have problems if you don't pay it. Now, we recognize what that is. It's no different than the person walking up to you and saying, you have to give to me. But many other people look at that and go, ah, oh, 25%, man, that's going to be rough. I wonder what we're going to get in exchange for it. Or they might say, you know what? I'm sick of all these taxes. I'm not going to pay any more of it. I'm going to go speak to someone about it. They're not fighting. They're not coalescing to do anything other than to essentially ask them not to do it because they don't have a basic, they have put aside that expectation, that basic expectation that someone in that position over here doesn't have to have the same respect for them as an individual human being and therefore not to rob them and take from them as they would if the person was just standing here not wearing a fancy suit like this and saying, hi, my name's Bob. That is the difference here. And it is that setting aside of that expectation or that contextualization of that expectation that allows government to be as tyrannical as it is. Very often, they don't have to use force. They just have to use the presumed authority that people give them. And this is what we at our core as libertarians understand. Wherever they are, podium, not podium, anything else, whether they're politicians, whether they are uh, uh, employees of the government, or whether they're just everyday people like you and me, they have to respect us the same as they would outside of that capacity. And it is that core message that everyone already agrees with. And I know everyone here is thinking the exact same thing. Spike, you are so right. It is amazing that you're saying this. I agree with you 100%. You look great, by the way. Have you been working out uh, a little bit? Yeah, thank you. Why are you? <laughs> I get an applause for telling you that you asked me if I work. You know what? I'll go with it. I love you guys. So listen, uh, the, the reality is that uh, people agree with us. They understand that. But how do we make that connection? Well, I can tell you one way that I'm making that connection. Uh, I started a nonprofit called You Were the Power. And the long, thank you. That I understand clapping for. Thank you. What is You Are the Power, you say? Uh, well, so You Are the Power is an organization we started. We find people who are being abused by their local governments, being disrespected by their local governments. And we help organize our thousands of liberty activists across the country. Uh, including what sounds like uh, quite a few of you in here, uh, as well as the people in that local community who are being disrespected. And we fight until they get that respect that they deserve. Now, not only are we doing that, in doing that, in helping people right now, 
We are also messaging to that community and to the public that at its core, this thing that happened, whether it's a, a, a CPS trying to uh, tear a family apart for no reason, whether it's politicians abusing eminent domain to steal someone's property, or zoning board members abusing their authority to steal, whatever it is that we come in, uh, come into, whether it's, a, a, for example, um, the government uh, banning people from feeding people who need food, whatever it is, at its core is the government, officials in government, not respecting people as individual human beings because if they did, they would have never done that. They would have never robbed them. They would have never taken from them. They would have never threatened them. They would have never abused them. They would have never done that. And so instead of arguing with people about libertarian philosophy, which again is one of my favorite hobbies, I know it is yours as well, instead, I show people an example of something that they already agree with us is a terrible thing. And I give them an opportunity to join us, to fight for and with us for that respect. And I drive home that message over and over again. This is about respect. This is about people in government treating you exactly how you would de demand that they treat you if they weren't in government. And we have been winning. We have been expanding across the country. But I'll tell you another group that's doing it. It's right here, Students for Liberty. Students for Liberty is taking that message of respect and taking it across the, what is it, over 100 countries, well over 60 that are represented here. And at the core of that message is human respect. At the core of the message of everything that you are all doing as leaders for liberty in your various countries, you are fighting to be treated with respect as an individual human being. And you are demonstrating the respect that you have for others as individual human beings. I'll tell you someone else who has been doing that with great success in the electoral sphere. Who here has heard of Javier Millet? Oh, okay, okay, so got some fans here. You may or may not know this, but uh, he's an alumnus of Students for Liberty. In many of his viral speeches, he's actually wearing an SFL pin. And I think, personally, that the reason that he has been so successful, running as a philosophical anarcho-capitalist, that's for the anarchist guy over there, uh, running as an anarcho-capitalist, yeah, I'm with you, uh, who, uh, who is promising to slash government, he won on that promise. And it wasn't because he got up and said, you know, these things aren't working very well, and if you look at this chart, you can see how there's an a, a inverse correlate. No, he, what he did was he said, I, they are scamming you. These agencies that are on this wall are scamming you. They're robbing you. They don't respect you. They're taking from you. I'm gonna give back what they took from you. Afuera, afuera, afuera. And so when those people saw him ripping those agencies or ministries off the wall, they didn't see, oh no, my education, oh no, my women's studies or whatever the other things were on there. What they saw was, oh good, he's ending the scam. He respects us. Si se puede. Did I say that right? Se puede. Si se puede. Yes. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> Impromptu Spanish moment, number two. Um, but so the reality is, whatever it is that you do, whether you're doing it in the realm of electoral politics, whether you're doing it in the realm of activism, whether you're doing it in the realm of journalism, we just had people talking about that, whether you're doing it in emerging technologies or in business or in health and wellness, whatever you are doing, I encourage you to take this core message with you. When we respect one another, we are more harmonious, we are more prosperous, and we are more happy. And when we are not respecting one another, we have less of all of that. We are less happy, we are less harmonious, and we are less pro uh, prosperous. I call that the principle of human respect. And I encourage you to adopt it the same way I have. It's what I do at You Are The Power, it's what Students for Liberty is doing here, and it's what I hope to see you do. I'm gonna leave you with this. Liberty is going to win because it has to. If we're going to go from this kind of slow managed decline that we are starting to see now to a future that we can't even imagine. It's only going to happen with freedom. It's only going to happen with decentralization of power. It's only going to happen with free market capitalist economics. That is the reality of it. And we're the ones who understand that the best. And so when we win, it's going to be because of you. 
You are going to be the people that they talk about in your countries, including if it's in the States. They're going, you're going to be the one that they talk about. The people who said, no, I'm not going to go with the status quo. I am right, and here is why I'm right, and here is why I expect you to join me. And if you use respect, whatever messaging you use, I encourage you to go forward and keep fighting for liberty. That's the rest of my time, folks. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I want to ask you one more question. I don't know about you, but I am here for nothing short of a revolution. Now, who's with me? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. 